Let's talk about anti-airs. Anti-airing is a technique in which you hit your opponent out of the sky in a fighting game. Depending on the fighting game, anti-airing can range from something that literally doesn't exist to the most important thing that you can learn. So it's generally important to know how to do it. But how does one anti-air? Well, it's very simple, actually. When your opponent jumps at you, hit them. No, no, not like that. If you want to anti-air your opponent, you need to use a move that will work well. But what move should you use? Well, let's look at the properties of a good anti-air. Take Ken's Crouching Heavy Punch, generally considered one of his best normal anti-air buttons. This is an 8-frame startup normal with middling on block properties and pretty good on hit properties. But that's not the main part that we're looking at. Look at how the move actually works. Ken does a little squat and raises his fist above above his head. This reaching up effect is an important part of any good anti-air for obvious reasons. It's because it hits the opponent that's above you. Oh! That's not the only good thing about this move. If we strip the code back, we can actually see the hitboxes on this move. Notice how the red box extends upwards past the green box. This red box is the part of the attack that actually damages the opponent, also known as the hitbox. And the green box shows where you can be hit by an opponent's attack, known as the hurt box. Ken's crouching heavy punch causes his hitbox to reduce towards his chest and his hurt box extends upwards past that, meaning he can hit opponents above him while reducing the risk of getting hit himself by going for this move. Moves that have their hit boxes extend past any hurt boxes are called disjointed moves. And if you have a disjointed move that hits upwards in the air, that's probably a good anti-air. So let's do a little test. Out of these two moves, which one would be a good anti-air? Correct, it's Jury's Crouching Heavy Punch. While her standing heavy punch does hit upwards and it can be used to hit opponents out of the sky, it lacks upper body invincibility, which leaves her susceptible to getting hit while the opponent is falling. Crouching Heavy Punch hits further up and has a slight disjoint at the tip, allowing for better situations for Jury. You have to be careful though. Some moves look like they will work as anti-airs, but lack the vital properties that actually make them effective. Look at this Giovanna move in Gilly Gear Strive. It functionally looks very similar to Ken's crouching heavy punch, having her attack above her head. She even ducks down from the start of the attack. But do not be fooled, this move is not a reliable anti-air. The entire attack has Giovanna being vulnerable due to the lack of a disjoint, and it's relatively slow. Because of this, despite it looking like one, this move should not be used as an anti-air, especially because Giovanna has other, much stronger options. Normals are not the only thing that you should anti-air with. Several characters have special moves that work extremely well as anti-airs. Keeping on Giovanna, while her 2H isn't very strong, she does have a really good anti-air on 623S. This move is much faster to come out, causes her hitbox to dip downwards all the way to the floor, and has an extremely high-hitting hitbox. Compared to the other anti-airs we've already looked at, this is a golden ticket of an anti-air move. The difference between this move and the normals is, of course, that it requires more effort to input. While an anti-air normal requires a direction a button, this requires you to do a special move input and then press the button, requiring much more time to execute and having much more room for failure. However, the reward in this is much, much higher. In Strive, Giovanna is able to get a full combo from this move, but in other games, you still get better reward. Heading back to Street Fighter real quick, sorry for the whiplash, several characters have anti-air moves that look like this. These have multiple names, but we'll be referring to them as DPs, as Ryu and Ken's Dragon Punch are the most famous examples of these. These moves, while no longer being fully invincible, have a complete invincibility to air moves, meaning if the opponent's jumping attack is inside your hurt box, it will not connect and your attack will go through. Alongside that, anti-air DPs do more damage than their normal move counterparts, and generally lead to better situations on hit. This isn't true with every game though. Some games give you bigger reward on landing normal hits as anti-airs, and some specific characters don't even have special moves that can be used for anti-airs. But don't be afraid to experiment. Once you know what your character's traditional anti-airs are, it may be worth looking for the weirdo ones and seeing if and how they work. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Now we know what button to press, we need to actually hit the opponent with them. So, how do we answer?
entire. Well, the first step is important. Wait for the opponent to jump in on you. This is extremely reliant on your opponent's habits. Some players will stay on the ground and never move. This is their home and they're not gonna leave it. They're gonna hunker down and do their silly little shimmy dance. Alternatively, some players are basically bunny rabbits with a controller. They will constantly hop around without care in the world. And better players are uh, somewhere in between, only jumping when it's advantageous or when they have no idea what else to do. At some point though, your opponent is gonna find themselves in the air and this is your chance to shine. Jump arcs are predictable in most fighting games. So now it's time to use our brain. Check to see where the enemy is jumping. If they're jumping backwards, the likely it is you're not gonna be able to hit them. If the opponent is jumping directly upwards, you may be able to hit them with an anti-air if you're close, but in this situation, we're not gonna be able to do that to them. No, we want to wait for them to jump forward towards us. This is the easiest type of jump to anti-air, since the likelihood is they're going to land on top or in front of us. Now that the opportunity has presented itself, it's time for us to actually hit the anti-air. You have to choose which move you're gonna do and get prepared to actually hit it. When the opponent is at the apex of their jump, that's the top. Begin inputting the move, timing it so that the opponent will essentially fall into the attack. And when you get the timing correct and the stars align... Congratulations! Now, you may have noticed that going for a special move in this situation was harder than going for a normal move like we said before. In fact, you might have even dropped it. This is fine, anti-airing with DPs is important, but it's something that takes time for people to master. If you want to get consistent, you're gonna have to train it. Street Fighter VI thankfully already has a preset training mode exercise for anti-airs, but other games might need you to set them up yourself. And those are the basics to anti-airing. Now, I'm sure that some of you still have questions. For example, what if my opponent is air dashing because that's a thing that happens in my games and you just completely ignored it. And that's honestly a pretty good question and a nice observation. Thank you for pointing that out. I'm proud of you. Have a cookie. Well, air dashes tend to have a funny quirk to them. When the opponent air dashes in most fighting games, their upwards momentum is generally halted, forcing them to go forwards or backwards. Anti-airing in these games is harder because the jump arc is less predictable, but you can still reliably do it if you know what you're looking for. Most air dashes have a sound effect when they're executed. If your opponent is advancing towards you and you hear the air dash sound, throwing out an anti-air is probably a good idea. Instant air dash forwards are very common in these games, and a quick anti-air generally stops the opponents dead in their tracks when they try them. Some games even make anti-air normals air unblockable, so you're rewarded for just going for them. Anti-airs in these games are considerably stronger than their traditional fighting game counterparts as well. Look at Abbas 2S. You think this could exist in Street Fighter? There's also one more problem when it comes to anti-airing, and that's the fact that your opponent isn't brain dead. Hopefully. Several characters are able to change their descent in a variety of ways, and this can lead to some... Interesting interactions. But this is where the game gets more interesting. When you have no idea what the fuck is going on. When the opponent begins to mix installing moves, anti-anti-airs, yes, that's a thing, and general bullshittery, it's a lot harder to just hit them out of the sky. In fact, it makes our first example look like child's play. But this is where the real fun begins, at least for me. As you get to start predicting your opponent. They could just jump in, or they could wait for your anti-air, stall so they don't get hit, and then hit you back. But if you wait for them to stall and retaliate, with an option of your own that could be stronger, you could get a high reward for it. But then they know that you know that they know that they might stall, so you do nothing and they just hit you with a normal, but then you know that they know that you know that they know that you might do nothing, so you go for a normal anti-air, but then they know that you know that they know that you know that they know that all of this is happening, and basically, you're inside each other's heads. The art of hitting your opponent out of the sky is simultaneously extremely basic and extremely convoluted. But with enough practice, you'll not only be able to reliably stuff your opponent's approaches, you'll unlock a whole new aspect of the game. You'll be doing things that you didn't even think was possible, and you'll learn to love these games even more. Or just get to Golden Street Fighter. Whichever works for you. Thank you all for watching. If you want to see me fail every single anti I'm going to go for, I'm playing Guilty Gear Strive in the park right now with you guys. I hope you all like this video. It might be a new format I'm trying. It's kind of fun to just take a very basic thing in fighting games and then really dig into it. See exactly what it is. So I might be doing more of these if you like it. If you do, like, comment, subscribe, share it, do all those things. I have a Blue Sky account now because Twitter sucks. It's terrible. It's absolute dog shit. So we're gonna be on there mostly it's it's so much nicer please come on over thank you all for watching and here's the patron read as always
As always, a very special thanks to 64 Megahertz, Almost Nap Time, Axel Auto Syndicate, Daniel Wiederich, Edison Luddery, Fexo, FL Maxler, Games.png, Haywire Nova Leap, Hoffmeister Bear, I Am Nauto, It's Riley, Knife and Spoon, Critty Cat, MP04, Mr. Clint, Nubus, Raid OU, Sergeant Clubby, Slimy Gal 42, Super, Storm SSB, Falcon, Tom Tanks, Velvet Puppy, and Zandatsu for being tier 2 patron supporters. 